When I was a kid, there was this one day I was troubled about something. I don't even remember what it was. My father noticed and um, he comes over to me and he places his hands on my head. And he says, Shalom, son. Do you know what that means? Yes, I nodded. I said, I meant peace. Then my daddy, he, uh, he knelt beside me and he took my face in his big calloused shepherd's hands. And he said, yes, peace, but more. And then he put a finger on my heart and he said, Shalom, God's highest and most complete good be upon you. That is my prayer for you, my son. He left his staff with me, and I've looked for it, what he mentioned, shalom, all these years. When the angels came, there was no hint of wind, no clouds just stars, so many stars. He showed himself to us <laughs> suddenly. And there was an angel brighter than stars who spoke and said, do not be afraid. I have good news. Your savior has, your savior has been born. and he lies in a manger. And then quiet, as if the whole world is waiting to breathe. A savior, God's highest and most greatest good for us, for me. And then suddenly, multitudes of angels shattered, shattered the silence, saying glory, glory, glory. God is on earth. His peace on earth. My father's prayers, I've seen, finally. Shalom. Peace. just take about 10 minutes and talk about that a little bit. I find it really, really, really interesting that we talk about peace when we look at the story of the shepherds in the, in the Christmas story. Because here we've got an evening that is silent and quiet and peaceful, and it's boldly interrupted. And there's chaos and confusion and fear. And that's not what we associate with peace, is it? I love the, what he said there in the video. When he was a kid, he was worked up about something. And his dad came and put his hands on his head and said, Shalom. God's highest and most complete good for you. 
wouldn't it be great if on your darkest week or, or you're having uh, a month that's just everything's going bad and things are troubled, or maybe you're just in this period of life where things are really, really difficult, and someone you love and respect comes up to you and just puts their hands on your shoulders and wishes you, praying that God's ultimate, most greatest, wonderful good, all of God's good for you. That's what I'm praying. Isn't that a great thing? Let's stop and pray before we jump into the Christmas story here. God, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for these kids that are all across the front here. And God, we look forward to their presentation in just a few minutes. But now as we go into the Christmas story in Luke and look at these shepherds and what they experience, God, open our eyes and our minds to understand this peace, this peace that Jesus promised us. Help us to really understand that so we know that. We know that shalom in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. In the craziness of that moment, all of a sudden a blinding light, right? And, and a non-human visitor is right with you there. And then angels across the sky. Can you imagine the chaos and the fear in that moment? And then the announcement of peace. They knew, they knew that, that the announcement the angels made were about the Messiah coming. They understood that. Uh, and, and there's no question that, that, that peace is connected with that. Over 400 times in the 1,002 pages in my Bible, over 400 times it talks about peace. Almost all of them connected directly with Jesus. What does peace mean to you? If I asked you to, to tell me what peace is, I wonder if we would say peace is a period when there's no war. Or maybe we live in a corner of Ontario that's relatively safe and quiet. Is, is that what peace is? Or is peace um, calm and quiet? Right? And, and we have... You know, 50 kids across the front here are not expecting peace and quiet, right? But, but is, is that what peace is? Just the, the quietness or the still? Um, is, is peace um, rest in your heart? The freedom from worry and anxiety? Uh, is peace really about our world? Is it calm in our world? Is it calm in my mind? Is it calm in my heart? Or is it calm in my soul? Or maybe, maybe peace is the absence of noise or the absence of unrest or the absence of anxiety or worry. Is peace the absence of that? Or is peace the addition of of an unnatural calm in the middle of the noise and the anxiety. Because that's two very different perspectives. In John chapter 14, Jesus says this, I am leaving you a gift, peace, peace in mind and heart. And, I get the, and the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Jesus is promising peace. It's interesting because I, I want to understand that. I want to know what he means by that. And I think the timing of his promise is everything. Because this, uh, this promise, he says that in his last days on earth. He knows that tomorrow he will be betrayed. He knows that he will be arrested and denied. He knows that he'll be tortured and crucified. And right in the middle of that, he's teaching his followers about peace and says, my peace I'm giving you. He was at peace. He had poise and composure and a calmness. He had peace in the middle of that chaos and the fear and the emotion. 
And he promised that peace to you. Jesus says, I'm giving you what I have. And if you know anything about Jesus' life, uh, it was not without trouble and craziness. Actually, peace is completely unrelated to our circumstances. Peace is not affected by our situations. So what was Jesus promising them? Jesus is saying, I give you shalom. I give you God's greatest good. I give you joyful contentedness, even on your worst day. This peace is not normal for humans. This is a gift. And the shepherd in the video talked about that shalom that his dad was hoping for him. God's highest and most complete good for you. That's a gift. Not a do-it-yourself. It's a gift. Peace is contented and full. That shalom because of Jesus. Because his rescuer had come, the Savior. Because the Savior had been born, that's what the angels were talking about. Peace on earth. And that's exactly what Jesus did. Jesus came on a rescue mission. Talked about that last week a little bit too. But but in his rescue mission, he dealt with the cause of the unrest, anxiety, fear. And he laid out a pathway for restoring peace with God. And that peace is life-changing. If you have a Bible, I want to go to Luke chapter 2. In Luke chapter 2 is the story where we read about the shepherds. It says in verse 8, I'm going to read 8 to 20. It says, That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Can you imagine after working all day, after chasing the sheep around, they finally have them... uh, safely tucked away in a corral, and they're sitting uh, by the corral door, guarding the door, maybe have a fire there. The shepherds have gathered. It's time to rest and get quiet, and and they're they're winding down. And in in the uh, video, he said, uh, there's not a hint of wind. The stars, so many stars, we saw that. So we get this picture in our mind of just this quiet, calm, at the end of the day where he can sit down and just go, ah, okay. And then the next word, first word in verse 9 is suddenly. All of a sudden, everything changes. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory shone around them. Suddenly, there's an angel with them, and they're filled with fear. I guess so. Now, a lot of times in the Bible, when, it's, when people have these meetings with angels like this, a lot of times they just say it was a man, and they found out later that it was an angel. No question this time, because here's this person in front of them, but the glory of God, all of the glory of heaven is shining around them. They knew. This was different. This wasn't the same. It says the full glory of God, the radiance And they were terrified. Verse 10. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid. He said, I bring you good news that will be great joy to all people. Stop freaking out. Don't be afraid. This is all good, he says. In the craziness, in the middle of the craziness and fear, it's going to be joy. Joy for a lot of people. I bring to you good news that will be great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth laying in a manger. Now, the shepherds would have gone to school. In school in that day, they would have learned the the Old Testament, the law, and the prophets, they would have learned the, uh, uh, the, the, the promises about Jesus, the Messiah coming. 
They would have learned all of that. And so they knew that this promise right away, they could connect the dots. They knew in Isaiah it said, people in darkness will see a great light. A child will be born. He'll be a wonderful counselor, prince of peace. They knew this. They knew the promise of Emmanuel, God with us, that the Savior, the Messiah, the Lord. So, still fear, but now maybe a little dazed. When I lived in Virginia and, and the kids did their uh, Christmas play at this point, the angels came to the shepherd and the little shepherd said, Say what? That's the, can you imagine the situation? And then in verse 13 again, the word suddenly. So all of a sudden, boom, again, the angel was joined by a vast host of others. The armies of heaven, praising God. The armies of heaven. That word host literally means troops. It means all of the armies of heaven. And the sky is filled and they're saying glory to God in the highest and on peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. You can imagine the response. Are we dreaming? Is this real? Sheep are such e so easily agitated and worked up. Somehow in my picture, in my head, I'm seeing all of the sheep standing there looking up with their mouths wide open too. When the angels return to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem and let's see this thing that has happened that the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby laying in the manger. So what do they do when they get there? Jesus, on his rescue mission, he dealt with the cause. He laid out the pathway forward, restoring peace, this life-changing peace. And they come, and the first thing they do, the only response, is fall on their knees. They fall on their knees. And we sing, we sing a song, Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It's the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. We've talked about that last week, how for for centuries, people longed for the promise of their rescue. The world was dark and bleak and hopeless. They were waiting for the Savior. They the, the long lay the world in sin and error, pining, till he appeared, and, and the soul felt its worth. The thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. For yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees. That's the appropriate response. Fall on your knees. Hear the angels' voices. Your rescuer is here. Elisa and Andy are going to come and sing that song for us. Oh, holy night. If you guys want to come and get ready, let me just say this as they're getting ready. Oh, holy night. Holy. That word holy just simply means set apart. Set apart for a specific purpose. Separated from everything. Singled out. That night that Jesus was born with was a holy night. Set apart from all other nights. Different than all other nights. Unlike any other night. That night set apart for a very specific purpose. On that holy night, peace came into the world. And peace came on a mission. That mission is your peace with God. Let me pray. Father in heaven, we want to say thank you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you that 2,000 years later, we are still very aware and we're celebrating this holy night the day the angels came and announced Christ's birth and you brought peace and, and into the chaos and the fear you brought peace and that didn't remove the chaos and fear you 
gave us Jesus peace, peace like he had in the middle of the craziness in the fear that we can have calm, contentedness, joyfulness, that shalom in the middle of the craziness. What a great promise. God, may we know that promise. All of God's goodness, the highest and most complete good for you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Folks, that's my prayer for you. God's highest and most complete good for you. God. 